Vertical play operators fill an extremely important role in Rainbow Six Siege. Seeing how important these operators are, you want to be picking the right one for the job. So in today's video, I'll be going through the three vertical play operators, those being Sledge, Buck, and Ram, and rating them out of 10 in four key categories. The categories are Gadget, Loadout, Secondary Gadget, and Versatility, same as usual. Then at the end of the video, I'll be adding up their scores to come to a verdict. So make sure you watch until the end to find out who is the best vertical play operator. Now the first operator we're going to be going over simply because he released first is Sledge. Sledge's gadget is his sledgehammer which allows him to open soft surfaces throughout a map. These soft surfaces include any sort of floors, walls, or barricades placed throughout the map. Now this is a really solid gadget for a couple of obvious reasons. First of all, verticality in Siege is extremely important as I discussed in the intro, and having a gadget that can allow you to do that effectively is really good. However, Sledge's sledgehammer does have a few problems in comparison to the other operators in this video. The first of which is the fact that Sledge has to get close to surfaces to be able to open them. This is because obviously with a sledgehammer, you can't really open surfaces from a distance. And the reason why this is a problem is because it leaves Sledge vulnerable for an extended period of time while opening these surfaces. This can allow Sledge to get nitro from below while making vert holes, or it can allow him to get shot through soft walls while he's opening them. This is an extremely big downside that needs to be taken into account. However, Sledge's hammer does have the additional benefit of being able to instantly break any sort of piece of hard utility. This means that if Sledge can get close enough to pieces of utility, he can just wipe them off the board without sacrificing anything. Because one thing that I haven't mentioned is the fact that his sledgehammer basically has infinite charges. This means that unlike Buck or Ram, he is not limited by how many holes or how many gadgets he can destroy in a given round. Now because Sledge's hammer is really good and does provide some solid utility to his team, he is going to be getting a decent score in this video, but because there are a lot of downsides to it, I think it's only fair to be giving him a 6 out of 10 the gadget category. Moving past Sledge's gadget, we can now discuss his loadout. Sledge has access to the L85 assault rifle and the M590 shotgun as his primary options, and then the P226 handgun as his only secondary option. The L85 is a really solid DPS assault rifle with extremely low recoil, making it an amazing rifle for any sort of beginner. And then the P226 handgun is just a serviceable handgun that can get the job done. However, the M590 shotgun on Sledge isn't really worth running because it's a shotgun on attack, and attackers can't really benefit from running a shotgun. Because of the fact that he no longer has an SMG-11 as his secondary option, and because the L85 is beat out by some other weapons in this video, I think a score of 7 out of 10 is fair for this category. Now moving past Sledge's loadout, we can now discuss the secondary gadgets. Sledge has arguably the best three secondary gadgets in the game right now. He has access to nades, flashbangs, and EMPs. Nades are strong for being able to force defenders out of a position, and for also being able to destroy certain pieces of utility. Flashbangs are useful for being able to once again force defenders out of positions, and also blind defenders and make a play off of them. And then EMPs are useful for being able to deny any sort of electronic utility. All of this combines to make Sledge have the best secondary gadget kit you could possibly have. And so for that reason, I'm going to be giving him a 10 out of 10 in this category. Anyways, now that we've discussed his secondary gadgets, we can now move on to the final category, versatility. And I think it's pretty clear that Sledge is worthy of a pretty high score in this category. Sledge has the benefit of not being map dependent since his sledgehammer allows him to basically be useful on every map. Then because his gadget is a sledgehammer, he can't really be counted meaning that the only way for the enemy team to deal with him is by killing him. And then also his secondary gadgets allow him to cover a ton of ground for his team and he can fill a ton of different roles. However, Sledge does have the downside of having to get close up to surfaces to be able to open them. And so for that reason, I am going to be dropping his score a little bit. So he's going to be getting an eight out of 10 in the versatility category. And I think that's still a really solid rating considering his kit. This means that Sledge's overall score after adding up all the categories is a 31 out of 40. And while this may sound like a really good score, as you'll soon see, the other operators in this video are really good competition for him. Anyways, moving past Sledge, we can now discuss Buck, and Buck's gadget is his skeleton key. This is an underbarrel shotgun that Buck brings to his team that can allow him to open soft surfaces, and it also functions as a weapon for him. This gives Buck the advantage of being able to open soft surfaces from a distance, unlike Sledge. Then the skeleton key being able to be used as a weapon, and a strong one at that, helps him a lot throughout a round when taking close range gunfights. Also, since Buck has the ability to open holes from a distance, he can play vertically below the bomb site. This is something that Sledge or Ram cannot do because their gadgets cannot reach the roof of a room. This allows Buck to fill a role that no one else can fill inside of Siege, which is obviously gonna help him a lot in this category. Then on top of it all, he can switch from his primary weapon to his shotgun very quickly, allowing him to open barricades and catch defenders off guard before they can even react. 
All of this combines to make Buck easily worthy of a 10 out of 10 in the gadget category, and I don't really think that can be debated. Now, moving past Buck's gadget, we can now discuss his loadout. Buck has access to the C8 assault rifle and the Camraz DMR as his primary options, and then he has access to a GON 6 and the MK1 pistol as his secondary options. The C8 assault rifle is another really good assault rifle, just like the L85. It has solid damage, a really good fire rate, and it has pretty low recoil. Then the Camraz DMR is a pretty solid DMR, but in comparison to his assault rifle, it doesn't really stand a chance, and so for that reason, a lot of people don't end up picking it. Then for his secondaries, the GON 6 is extremely useful for being able to deal with utility like deployable shields, castle barricades, or anything that requires explosives. And then the MK1 pistol is a solid secondary weapon if you feel it's necessary to bring a secondary weapon. All this combines to allow Buck's loadout to be extremely versatile, and it also makes his loadout one of the strongest in the game. And for that reason, he's going to be getting a 10 out of 10 in this category. Now moving past Buck's loadout, we can now discuss his secondary gadgets. Buck, at the time of recording, has access to flashbangs and secondary hard breach charges. Flashbangs, as I discussed with Sledge, are some of the strongest secondary gadgets you can have on the attack. And secondary hard breach charges are extremely strong for Buck specifically, because since he's a vertical play operator, these can allow him to open hatches on the bomb site. However, since Buck only has two secondary gadget options, and I would argue that Sledge has a lot better options on his kit, I'm gonna be giving Buck a nine out of 10 in the secondary gadget category. Now, finally, we can discuss Buck's versatility. Buck is arguably the most versatile operator in the game. He's not map dependent because once again, he is a soft breacher, so he can open walls, he can open floors on pretty much every map. So he doesn't require specific bomb sites or specific maps to flourish. And the fact that he can open soft surfaces from a distance, then the fact that he has the ability to play vertically from below, unlike any other operator, in the game he has really strong weapons at his disposal he has two pretty solid secondary gadgets that allow him to fill multiple roles makes him an absolute beast in any ranked lobby also since this kid is so well-rounded it also allows him to excel in solo queue or in lower ranks where communication isn't really there so for that reason buck's going to be getting a 10 out of 10 in the versatility category and i don't think anyone would be surprised by that leaving him with an overall score of 39 out of 40. Now, after Buck's extremely strong score of 39 out of 40, Ram is going to have a hard time beating that, but she's going to give it her all. Ram's gadget is the Buggy Auto Breacher. These are drones that can be thrown on the ground by Ram, and that when activated, they will open any soft surfaces in their path. This gives Ram the ability to open soft surfaces without taking any sort of risk, because the drones are doing it for her and she doesn't have to play anywhere near her drones. So this makes it harder for the defenders to nitro cell Ram while she's playing vertically, and it also makes it difficult for them to shoot her through a wall while she's opening it. Then because of the fact that her gadget is remotely activated, she can sit on top of her breachers, wait for them to start opening the floor, and then shoot a defender as soon as the floor is opened. This will leave the defender with little time to react and can allow Ram to pick up kills that other vertical play operators wouldn't be able to. Also, another benefit of Ram's breachers is that they make a lot of noise, allowing her to cover her team's rotation or to even cover the plant with how much noise this gadget produces. Then on top of that, she can also throw her breachers through a barricade and they will instantly destroy, allowing her to make aggressive plays and catch defenders off guard. However, Ram's gadget does have one downside and it's a pretty glaring one and this downside is the fact that her breachers make massive holes in the floor this means that if you're bringing a ram and you're not being smart on how you place your breachers you can end up opening the entire floor of a room you're playing in which can leave you vulnerable while you're playing vertically so with ram you have to be a little more mindful of how you play vertically in comparison to other operators like sledge or buck where they don't really have to be as careful however this downside isn't significant enough to reduce her score by that much so i'm going to be giving her a 9 out of 10 in the gadget category moving past ram's gadget we can now discuss arguably her biggest strength, which is her loadout. Ram has access to the R4C, which is one of the strongest assault rifles in the game, and the LMGE as her two primary options, and then she has access to the ITA-12S shotgun and the MK1 handgun as her secondary options. The R4C is extremely strong for obvious reasons. It's been a fan favorite for many years, and that's because of its really fast fire rate, its solid damage, and its moderate recoil. Then on top of the R4C, Ram has access to the LMGE, the strongest LMG in the game right now, I would argue, as another potential option if it's your fancy. This combined with the fact that she has the ITA-12S shotgun, which can allow her to make additional vert holes if her buggy breachers aren't enough, and that she has the MK1 handgun, which is a pretty solid handgun, I think she is worthy of a 10 out of 10 in the loadout category, and it's not even close. Moving past Ram's loadout, we can now discuss her secondary gadgets, which at the time of recording, she has access to smoke grenades and flashbangs. As I've discussed multiple times in these videos, flashbangs are one of the strongest secondary gadgets in the game right now, and her having access to those is an extreme benefit. And then smoke grenades are extremely strong for being able to cover 
over the plant, which in conjunction with her breacher drones can make her a pretty solid supporter of the plant. And they also have the benefit of being able to cover lines of sight to help you deal with a mirror window or something like that. All of this combines to make her have pretty solid options, especially in the context of her gadget. So I'm gonna be giving her a nine out of 10 in the secondary gadget category. Now for the final category, versatility. Once again, Ram, like all the other operators in this video, excels in this category. She's not map dependent just like the rest of them because most maps have some form of vertical play and she can also be used to open soft walls or to open barricades to make aggressive plays. Then she has the benefit of being able to open holes without any risk because like I said, her gadget is remotely detonated. Then she has an amazing weapon kit which allows her to be a really good fragger as well, which is why a lot of people like running her over sledge or buck. And she has top tier secondary gadgets that allows her to support her team in amazing ways. However, she does have the downside of not being able to open walls as effectively as other operators in this video and the fact that her gadget make such big holes in the floor however even with both those downsides in mind i still think she's worthy of a 9 out of 10 in the versatility category just for the fact that she can be used in so many situations this leaves ram with an overall score of a 37 out of 40 and i think it's wholeheartedly deserved and with the scores tallied up buck is the clear winner with a score of 39 out of 40. considering how good he is at opening vertical holes and because of the fact that he's just so versatile i don't think many will be surprised by this answer as always though this video is strictly my opinion and if you disagreed feel free to leave your opinions in the comments down below I'd love to hear them. If you enjoyed today's video, I make siege content just like this twice a week, so go subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter if you don't want to miss the next upload. Also, I've started posting on a second channel where I upload non-siege content, so if that's something you're interested in, I'll leave a link in the description so you can go check it out. If you want to watch another video just like this one, a VB popping up on your screen right now that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Also, if you want to watch a video from that second channel I mentioned, a video from that channel will be popping up on your screen right now as well. I'll see you next time, friends, and peace.